Arthroscopic bank art repair using the push lock and label tape. This is an instructional video on how to undertake an arthroscopic bank art repair using the push lock and label tape system. The key steps to undertake a successful arthroscopic stabilization are positioning of the patient, undertaking a diagnostic arthroscopy, and then an arthroscopic bank art repair. The patient can be positioned in the lateral decubitus, which has the advantage of the arm being on traction, or in the beach chair which has the advantage of the arm being free. I prefer to do all of my procedures in the beach chair position and the videos in this talk are all in the beach chair. The initial portal is a posterior portal. It's important to remember that the scapula lies at 30 degrees to the anterior plane. For the portal to lie parallel to the glenoid surface, the scope needs to be directed towards the coracoid process. An anterior portal is required for anchor access and this can be established by an outside to in technique at the inferior edge of the rotator interval just above subscapularis. I like to have a second portal for suture management which is positioned at the superior part of the rotator interval. As with any arthroscopic procedure it begins with a diagnostic arthroscopy. Viewing from the posterior portal it is possible to assess for the bank art tear, evidence of a slap lesion, biceps pathology, humeral bone loss and whether there's a hill sax lesion and whether that engages. The scope can then be placed into the anterior portal so that the bank art lesion can be assessed more fully, so the presence of an Alpsa lesion noted, the amount of glue node bone loss, whether there's a Hagel lesion, evidence of reverse bank art tear or any evidence of posterior instability. This is a diagnostic arthroscopy of a 23-year-old male's left shoulder who's having recurrent instability we can see that he has a bank art tear anteriorly. As we come inferiorly, we can see that there's some label damage and possible damage to the capsule, so it's important to look for a haggle. The arm is bringing brought, brought into abduction, external rotation. We can see the hill sacs lesion, and this doesn't engage in the physiological position. If you're in the anterior portal, we can now see evidence of an Alpsa lesion, so the capsule is healed medially, and there's no evidence of a Hagel lesion as we internally rotate the shoulder. Having identified that the patient does require a bank art repair, the steps of the procedure are obtaining adequate soft tissue mobilisation, then preparing the bone, and then adequate soft tissue fixation. The capsule and labrum needs to be fully mobilised down to the 6 o'clock position so that the most inferior fibres of the capsule can be resuspended, recreating the anterior inferior glenohumeral ligament. This can be done using a tissue liberator or a knife rasp, some people do use a radio frequency probe, but I do have concerns with regards to thermal damage to the articular cartilage. Indicators that the capsule has been sufficiently mobilised are being able to view the anterior fibres of subscapularis through the capsule. And also, once the capsule has been fully mobilised, it tends to float up into the reduced position. This can be assessed further by switching off the inflow of fluid allowing the rest of the fluid to come out of the joint and the capsule should then be sucked up into the joint. Having fully mobilised the capsule, the glenoid needs to be prepared. This requires exposure of fresh cancellous bone over the anterior edge or rim of the glenoid whilst preserving the articular cartilage. This can be done with a shaver and a slap or hooded burr. This is the capsule and labrum being mobilised in the patient that we've already been seen. I'm using a knife rasp which has got a nice sharp edge. I'm starting at about the 2 o'clock position and carefully making sure the rasp stays on the glenoid, cutting the capsule from superior to inferior. I like to make small steps and there will be a tipping point where the capsule is uh, nicely mobilised and making sure that the liberator is quite medial, pulling back and actually pulling the capsule with the bony bank art away. It's important to get right down to the six o'clock position. So as we progress, we can see the fibers of subscapularis, the captures floated up into the reduced position. We switch the inflow off and the water's now leaving the joint and we can see the capture actually sucks itself out up into the joint. Having mobilized the capsule, we're now going to prepare the glenoid a uh, shaver removes any residual soft tissue and this is the hooded bar burr decorticating the bone. If you for the anterior portal we can see there's a nice cancellous strip present with a minimal loss of articular cartilage. 
Having mobilized the capsule and prepared the glenoid, we now need to fix the tissue back up onto the glenoid. Glenoid or instability anchors tend to be 3.5 mm in diameter and smaller and can be made of metal, bioabsorbable, peak, biocomposite or all suture material. They tend to always be interference fit. The choice of anchor is really down to the preference of the surgeon and beyond the scope of this talk. Tissue fixation can be either knotted or knotless. Once again, this is up to the surgeon's preference. There are pros and cons for both. And again, this is beyond the scope of this talk. For this procedure, I'm going to use a push lock anchor. It's 2.4 millimeters in diameter and 11.3 millimeters in length. I like to use a biocomposite material and I'm actually going to use the uh, suture tape, which does have some perceived advantages over standard fiber wire sutures. Regardless of the type of anchor that's being used, it's important to always use a drill guide to use a minimum of three anchors to drill and insert each anchor one at a time, working from inferior to superior, and to actually put the anchor onto the articular cartilage so the capture is actually brought up onto the anterior edge of the glenoid. There are a number of ways of passing the suture through the capsule. You can use a suture or label punch, a suture shuttle technique, or a retrograde technique using instruments such as a Sixta. Today I'm going to be using a suture shuttle technique. The essence of a successful bank art repair is obtaining a sufficient superior shift to reconstruct the anterior inferior glenohumeral ligament. The first suture is the biggest determinant of this shift. It's important to pull the inferior capsule right up to the first anchor with a maximum tension. This can sometimes be helped using a traction suture or a grasper, but is ultimately down to experience and skill. Retensioning of the inferior glenohumeral ligament essentially involves a south to north shift or tightening of the capsule. It's important to avoid an east to west direction, so avoiding taking a large bite of tissue as this will compromise external rotation. The push lock technique is a suture first technique so that the suture and label tape are passed through the capsule first and then the anchor is inserted. The Optech recommends doing the drill hole after the suture has been passed. I prefer to do this uh, before passing the suture just to avoid any tangles. So this is the drill hole for the first uh, anchor, the inferior anchor at the 430 position. Having passed this using the suture shuttle system, we like to take a nice bite of the capsule as inferiorly as possible. Then to pass the shuttle out, this is retrieved through the superior portal the label tape is then loaded into the shuttle and pulled through. The second limb of the label tape is then pulled out. Having passed the label tape through the capsule, it now needs to be loaded into the push lock anchor. The anchor has an eyelet at the bottom uh, through which there is a delivery device. The two tails of the suture are passed through this. The orange device is then pulled through, loading the sutures uh, through the eyelet of the anchor. Having loaded the suture tape, the eyelet and central core of the introducer need to be pushed down into the bottom of the drill socket. Once the eyelet is at the bottom, the orange cap B can be removed from the introducer and the outer tube on the introducer will knock the anchor down so that it will dock directly with the eyelet. The suture tape has been loaded into the introducer and the eyelet is now going to be pushed down to the bottom of the drill socket. Once this has been knocked into position, the orange cap will be taken off of the introducer and the anchor itself will then be pounded into the socket. This will pull up the label tape, getting a nice uh, fixation and shift of the labrum itself. Once this is secure, the suture is then cut flush using a tape cutter. This is then repeated for the second and third anchor. Having mobilized the capsule and prepared the glenoid, we're going to start with our inferior anchor. So this is at the 430 position, so we're going to drill our drill hole. Having done this, I'm going to use the suture shuttle system. We're going to go as low as possible at the six o'clock position. With supination, we get a nice shift. You can see there's a little bit of bone in the, uh, so a bony bank art in the tissue. This is coming up at exactly the drill hole. 
We're now going to pass the suture shuttle through. This is going to be retrieved through the superior portal with the tape manipulator. The label tape is loaded onto the shuttle and this is now going to be pulled out through the inferior portal so we can see the label tape going through and with the tape manipulator we're going to get the other end of the tape out so that both of the tapes are going to be coming out through the inferior portal. The anchor has now been loaded and we can see that the eyelet is going to be knocked down to the bottom of the socket so we're just going to tap that in and as we do so you can see that it's actually bringing the capsule up nicely so the eyelets at the bottom of the socket we're going to take the cap orange cap off now and so the anchor itself is now going to be knocked into a position just below the level of the glenoid bone it's now unscrewed so the introducer has been detached and we're going to use the tape cutter to get a flush cut of the tape we've done the second anchor so this is now the most superior anchor once again we're going to drill the hole at about the 230 position it's still possible to get a bit of a shift so with the suture shuttle we can actually go low and you can see that we're still getting some further suspension of the capsule and labrum once again the suture shuttle is brought up close to the level of the drill hole sutures pass through we're now going to shuttle the label tape this is going to be loaded into the push lock once again that's going to be knocked down into the bottom of the socket the anchor as you can see is actually dropped down but as we actually as we knock the eyelet and you can see that the anchor is actually going to go right up to the top of the outer sleeve the orange cap is now taken off and the anchor itself is now going to be knocked into position onto the eyelet the introducer is unscrewed and the sutures are going to be cut so at the end of the procedure we can see that we've got nice suspension of the capsule we've recreated the bumper of the labrum putting the scope in from the front we can see that the capsule has been nicely brought up and we've re-established the anterior inferior glenohumeral ligament with good internal and external rotation which actually isn't pulling on our repair so in summary, to undertake a successful arthroscopic stabilisation, the patient needs to be positioned correctly. An adequate diagnostic arthroscopy needs to be undertaken to ascertain exactly the pathology. And assuming that an arthroscopic bank or repair is the appropriate procedure, it's important to get adequate soft tissue mobilisation right down to the 6 o'clock position. We need to decorticate and prepare the glenoid. We're aiming for a south to north shift without any east to west involvement so we don't want to lose external rotation and require adequate anchor fixation. If you'd like to know more about shoulder instability or any other aspects of shoulder surgery you may wish to visit my website www.cambridgeshoulder.co.uk There are also over 40 other instructional videos of all aspects of shoulder surgery on my YouTube channel which is called Cambridge Shoulder.